Have you ever come up with a creature idea so unique that you couldn't just take one out of the monster manual and alter it? You have to build it from scratch. So today, we're gonna build a creature from scratch. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner, and welcome back to the Daily D20, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. Sometimes you want to make a creature and there's not one in the monster manual that really works in order to alter it, or you just want to feel the creative energies of creating something from scratch. So how do we go about creating a creature? Today I'm showing you the tier 2 method, so it's not as complicated as it could get, but it's still decently complicated. By the end of this video, you should have a creature that you made that's all your own, and let me know in the comments below what that is. Give me some of the statistics and just share it with the community. To start out making a creature from scratch, you need to have a concept, a reason to have this creature. For me, I'm going to be creating a demonic ooze monster that I'm going to be throwing at my players as they get into an underground temple kind of area in the adventure that we're playing. Next, you need to get yourself a list of the monster stats. I'll provide a link to a version that I'm going to use, a template, so to speak, that you can use for yourself in the description below. Go ahead and download that and give that a go. Starting off, you want to name it, give it a size and a type. For me, I'm just going to name it Demonic Ooze for the time being. The size is going to be huge. If you remember sizes, you have tiny, small, medium, large, huge, and gargantuan. Medium being the humanoid, humans, elves, dwarves that live in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. But like I said, I'm going with huge. The type for me is going to be an ooze monster. There is no subtype of monster in Dungeons & Dragons that is a demon ooze, so I'm just going to go with the ooze category. And that is because if a creature is strong against ooze monsters or weak against ooze monsters, that will come into play during the game. Now, as we dive into the creature's stats a little more in depth, I'm going to show you a tool that I like to use that I come to call the creature grid or the creature table. It's basically a set of stats based on challenge ratings for different creatures. So you can look at this table, find a challenge rating that works for your creature, and it gives you a bunch of different stats that you can use on your creature to give it that similar strength that you're looking for. If you look at this table for each challenge rating, you'll find that it provides a proficiency bonus, an armor class, a hit point range, an attack bonus, a damage per round number, and a spell save DC. Using these stats, we can make our creature more well balanced for the players that we're throwing them at, so they don't feel too overwhelmed or too underwhelmed by the encounter that we're making. So as an example, I am picking a challenge rating 10 because I want this creature to be able to fight against four level 10 players. And so I'm gonna go across this table and just write down all these information for my own use. Proficiency bonus, I will just note down on the side for later use when it comes up. The armor class of this ooze will be 17. The hit points gives me a range from 206 to 220. So I'm gonna go on the higher end of the hit points. I'm gonna stick with a 220 hit point for this creature. The attack bonus listed is plus seven. So we're definitely gonna use that with this guy because it is gonna be more of a melee attacker. The damage per round is also listed as a 63 through 68. So I'm gonna pick kind of a middle ground. I'm gonna pick 64 for the damage per round for this creature. Now the important thing you need to know about damage per round is this does not mean a damage per attack. If your creature is a type of creature that's going to do multiple attacks in a turn, you want to be able to split up the damage per round between your different attacks, which is exactly what we're going to be doing with our Ooze Demon in a little bit. The spell save DC I'll note down for if I need to use magic for this creature, but for this Ooze Monster I'm not really using magic, so it's not as important as the attack bonus for this specific instance. So now that we have all the really important information like armor class, hit points, attack bonus, these kind of things, we can begin to fill in the rest with our own imagination and come up with the creature that we want. So as we go through this, I'm going to be filling in the blanks for this ooze creature, but I hope you fill in the blanks for the creature that you've decided to create, and let me know what that is down below. For speed, this ooze creature is going to be big and lumbering and slow, so the actual speed of movement is going to be 15 feet per turn. It's about half the speed of an average humanoid adventurer. For the ability scores section, this is the creature's strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. I'm going to start from the highest and most important and work backwards from there. In this case, the highest that this creature is going to have is its strength. It is a melee attacker that tends to use its attack bonus quite frequently, so I'm going to start with the attack bonus, which is a plus seven. Then, for my purposes, and this is the method that I use, you don't have to do the same method, this is just my way of doing things. 
I take the attack bonus, I subtract the proficiency bonus, which in this case is a plus four, which leaves me with a three. Now, if the strength modifier for this creature is a three, then that means the strength ability score is either 16 or 17, according to the ability score table in the player handbook. So I'm going to make this a 17 strength with a plus three ability score modifier. Since that is the only one that really determines the attack actions for this creature, the rest I'm gonna fill in how I feel that the creature would be. Is it dumb? Is it slow? Is it ugly? What is your creature like? Then you can fill in the rest of these statistics for your creature. So for mine, he's slow and lumbering, so his dexterity is going to be pretty low. I'm gonna give him a 10, which means it's a zero ability modifier. Its constitution is going to be pretty high. It can take a beating, so I'm giving it a 15 on constitution, which will give it a plus two constitution modifier. So its intelligence is meaning it's not super smart, it's not super dumb either, but I'm gonna give it a 12, which will give it a plus one to its intelligence modifier. The wisdom, I'm going to keep the same as the intelligence, just make it a 12, give it a plus one to its wisdom, but its charisma, because it's a ugly ooze monster demon, it's going to have pretty low charisma. It's going to have an eight, which means it's going to have a negative one to any charisma rolls. Continuing down our stat block, we need saving throws. Saving throws are the ability scores that this creature is very good at for defending itself. For this creature, for its ability scores that it will save itself with, I will be placing them as constitution and wisdom. Constitution being one of the highest scores, Wisdom being just kind of in the middle, but I can take the Ability Score modifiers for these two Ability Scores, add the Proficiency bonus, and I end up with a Constitution save of plus six and a Wisdom save of plus five. I then write these two down in this Saving Throw section. I'd like to also point out, don't get too crazy with the Saving Throws of your creature. These change the strength of your creature just like anything else. So I tend to go with the idea that it's kind of an adventurer statistic. Most adventurers only have two ability scores that they are proficient in saving throws. Do the same for the creature. For the skills section, there is a difference between this and the ability scores. These are the more niche down kind of skills that the creature might have. So instead of looking at the ability scores, you can actually look at the player handbook in the skills section and decide some skills that your monster might be good at. And then you're going to take the ability score that that relates to and add the proficiency bonus. For my creature, I'm going to make him very good at intimidation, meaning he will just get the proficiency bonus. But if you remember, his charisma is so low that he gets a negative one. Negative one plus four is plus three to his intimidation checks. If he needs to intimidate someone, he's got a plus three on his rolls. Next on the list are damage resistance and vulnerabilities. Now, what would your creature be resistant to? And don't go too crazy. If you don't think your creature would be resistant to any damage, like they would just take the full brunt of every hit, then leave it at that. For my creature, I decided that they are resistant to acid because they use acid in their attacks. But because it's a demon, he's going to be vulnerable to radiant damage, which is kind of the holy damage that we talked about in my other video about damage types. So I'm gonna list those down as resistant to acid and vulnerable to radiant damage. Next on the list, does your creature have any special senses that it might use in its environment? My creature largely lives underground in the dark, so I'm giving it dark vision, and that is all it's gonna get. For the languages of your creature, list any that it knows, and know that creatures don't have to understand or speak common in Dungeons and Dragons if they don't want to. For instance, my creature is only going to speak Abyssal and Infernal, so if the players want to try and communicate with it, one of the players will have to speak one of those languages in order to communicate. But I'm not making this creature as a character that the players can actually communicate with, it's more of just a punching bag, so I'm making it harder to communicate with by picking really weird languages. For the challenge rating option, I just write down the challenge rating that I pick, which is 10. There will be more videos. We'll do another video about challenge rating and the math behind it a little bit, or the simplified math that Wizards of the Coast has given us. But for this specific version, this example of it, just write down the challenge rating that you started with. When it comes to the traits of your creature, you can pick pretty much any trait that any creature in the Monster Manual has. And also, if you look in the Dungeon Master Guide, there's a couple pages on page 280, you see a whole list of creature traits that you can pick from. Pick a few that you would like, or just pick one, or just make one up yourself, it doesn't really matter, these are the traits for your creature. For me, I decided my creature would get a reaction when it's attacked with a melee attack, it would have a reaction to try and grapple its attacker. That's gonna be its kind of its trait that it uses when it's not its turn. Then last on this list is actions. These are the things that your creature can do when it is their turn in the game. 
Think of how your creature would act on its turn. What motivates this creature? For mine, it is a damage dealer. It wants to hit things and it wants to cause some damage and it wants to use a little bit of acid when it can. So this is where we're gonna actually tie back into the damage per round as we're talking about multi-attacks because my guy is going to have multi-attack. Multi-attack just means that your creature can do multiple attacks on its turn and you can decide how many attacks it gets. Standard is kind of two attacks depending on the level of the creature, but you can give it three or four attacks if you want it to be a real challenge for your players. For this specific case, I'm giving it multi-attack so it can attack twice on its turn, but it can only use its individual attacks once per turn. And then I'm going to lay out the information about the individual attacks. So the first of the attacks is going to be its ooze tentacle that it's going to try and reach out and hit someone with. This attack is going to get a plus seven on its attack bonus because that's what the table earlier on told us to do. But then also I get to decide how much damage this is going to do and what range this creature has. I want this to be a threat to the players even if they're not close up to it, so I'm going to give it a reach. And reach means that it can reach out and touch a player within 10 feet of it instead of within 5 feet. That's just a minor thing that it can do, it just gives it a more of a, a range of attack for its tentacles, which to me makes a lot of sense. So then I'm going to list the damage. Because I'm doing this simple, I'm not going to do the math of dice rolling and trying to figure out how much die I need to roll. I'm going to give it a flat damage amount, and it's only going to be a part of the total damage per round that was given to us by the table. So from the 64 damage that we can deal, I'm going to have this deal 44 bludgeoning damage with its ooze tentacle. The next action I want to do is going to be an acid spray. Now I know there's a spell that's called acid spray that has a similar effect, but this is not going to be a spell, this is going to be an actual spewing of acid from this creature. I'm also going to let this have an attack bonus of plus 7 because I'm going to treat it like it's some sort of thrown weapon attack. So it still gets the plus 7 to hit on the enemies. The difference between this one and the other one is the damage type will be acid. So if a creature is resistant to acid damage, it won't hurt them as much. But it's also only going to do 20 points of acid damage per turn, which means the 44 bludgeoning plus the 20 acid equals 64 total damage per round, which is the math that the table told us to use earlier. So that's how I was able to divide the damage between the different multi-attacks. If you're making a creature that only has one attack per round, you can give it the full force of the damage per round on the table. You can also go through and pick some dice that you can roll to make the average damage equal out to what is on the table. That will go over in another video. But for this, I'm just going with straight damage so I don't have to think too much. I don't have to roll extra dice when we're in the middle of combat and I can just hit the players as much as I need to. Now, if you followed along throughout this whole process, you should have a creature of your own filled out and ready to go and throw at your players. So let me know in the comments below what that is. And again, fellow game masters, I've been Richard Quiner. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see on the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. You can also click over here to see more videos in this playlist or over here to see what YouTube suggests you watch from my channel.